So let me ask you this. What's the point of a video game? And it's not a deep or a trick question at all. Like, what's the reason? What's the purpose of it? It all comes down to entertainment. So to see people on the internet get into this doom and gloom mindset of every game is dead or boring or fell off, whatever it is, especially since TikTok blew up, it's kind of sad, honestly. Like, it goes on so much, to, it makes you wonder, like, do you even enjoy games in the first place? Like, are games like a fun thing to do for you? I mean, the answer is probably yes if you click this video at all, but it's just a common mindset going around now and to be honest, enjoying games is easy, actually. And this is directed mainly at online games. That's Those are the ones that catch the whole dead that you can't really end a single player game because it's not online. Always online is a thing, but it's nowhere near necessary. Like a regular single player game, once you have it, it's kind of like you just you play it, maybe you replay it, and that sort of thing. So like Steam charts and player data, how people will talk about that, public reception and the hype cycles, quality games, how they release, and just the expectations people have. And then just like monetization, microtransactions, all of that. And starting with Steam charts, the main point people try to get off most of the time is like, oh, it only has X amount of players, or it, it look at the look at the decline on the, on, the, on the Steam chart graph. And I'm knocking this one down first because it's the easiest one to dismantle. There are other launchers on PC, EA, EA, Epic, Ubisoft, those are just three. And then, you know, consoles, if a game it has console support, and then, you know, crossplay and cross progression is like standard now, it, Steam charts don't matter all that much. It's something that's just like, oh, it's cool to know, I guess, but nothing more than that. But even if a game is only on Steam, not on anything else, still, it, it just, it shouldn't matter to you as far as if you enjoy a game or not. It's a real simple couple of steps to take when you want to play a game. Step one, you see the game, you hear about the game, you're like, all right, that looked kind of cool. Kind of want to play that. Step two, you play the game. This is where money potentially gets involved. A lot of times games are free to play now or got like a demo or like a play test, something like that. But if you got to pay, you know, maybe you look up some gameplay of it, see if it's something you're interested in and you play the game, right? Then you come to a crossroads. I like the game, I'm going to play the game. Or I don't like this game and I'm not going to play the game. Now, nowhere in that is there a like... Oh, but like people on TikTok, they really gassing it up. So I should really try it. Like the only time that kind of interference comes in is if like your friends ask you to play the game. Yeah, I I've never cared for Overwatch, but my friends asked me to play Overwatch 2. When it came out, I was like, yeah, I'll try it. It's free anyways. I didn't like it, still don't like it. So <laughs> I mean, I didn't like the game, but like, I'll try the game. You know, playing game games with friends is usually more fun than playing alone anyway. So, you know, that, that can happen. But generally speaking, when it just comes to just you, no randoms involved like leave out all the steam charts all the people are hyping this game up it's gonna be like that the cod killer all of that is to the side it's just like extra conversations that are being had okay to have them ain't nothing wrong with having them we just don't take them too serious because sometimes a game you like is gonna be the popular game like i played fortnite when it first came out or in those first early beta seasons when people used to post their wins on stories that was a time <laughs> That was just odd also. I've never seen games on people's stories. That is the only time. That and Pokemon Go. Shout out Pokemon Go. But like I played 2K from 16 to 19. Forget about 18, but like 16, 17, 19, like it was fun. And then there's some games I played that aren't that popular. Like uh, I still play Shadowline from time to time. I think that game was relevant on Twitter for like a day. But yeah, if you've watched any of my like past 10 to 15 videos, I probably brought up the finals and all of them. And I'm gonna keep doing it because I still like the finals, bro. And people swear that game is dead, but I'm like, look, when I boot the game up and I pick a mode, I always get into a game pretty quick. So as far as I'm concerned, it's alive. I've been playing Lamont Ultimate a lot. I have a wheel. Bro, outside the sim racing community, no sim game gets talked about, except maybe a set of Corsa with like the no hezzy cutting up. That's really it. I ignore the numbers, but if it's an online game and it's shut down, then yes, I'm sorry. You cannot play that game. You can't play Spellbreak. I'm sorry. And this kind of ties into the next point of just like public perception and hype cycles. When a game first drops or a new season comes out, that's when it's going to have the most eyeballs on it. That's when it's like the new shiny thing, right? At its peak, when it's new, it's always a drop off. Like it's normal. It's not a bad thing. With games like Power World, the game peaked at like 2 mil on just Steam. It's on consoles and just Steam alone. It had like 2 mil. It's nowhere near that now. That's okay. Or Helldivers 2. That game blew up a lot. And then there are people saying that game like fumbled. And it's like, no, the game is still fun. It's just the goal of a video game is not to just lock you into it and make it your obsession. 
it's just entertainment. I think that's the part people are missing. Like games aren't supposed to be an obsession, aren't supposed to take over like a large part of your life. Now, if you're in that point, 0.00001%, you out there running up millions off tournaments, okay, that's your job. Congrats. But for the rest of us, like, it's not the case. But there are real problems. Releasing just half-baked games, so this is something that's, like, not our fault. This isn't down to our perception. This is, like, this game does not function. Like, it's released. Sometimes it costs money, and the game does not work. Fattest scam in this year was the day before. That is, that's, like, the biggest example of a game that just does not work when it came out. They literally took y'all money and said, all right, bro, we shut the game down. Or just games releasing like free to play uh, live service games, they release like super buggy. And when that is the complaint, that is a valid complaint. It's just not the complaint most of the time with games nowadays, because now everybody wants like something that's just gonna hold 300,000 players per platform every single day. No. That aside, another thing you can do to just enjoy games more is just ignoring the microtransactions, because they are annoying. You know, they're, they be getting egregious. Apex Legends, for example, they tried to turn their battle pass from $10 worth of coins to buy it once and you get them back enough every season to keep buying it to you have to spend $10 in cash or, you know, convert to whatever your currency twice a season. They tried to make it 20 and then people were like, absolutely not. They like, you know, ravaged them on Twitter, or Reddit, whatever, and they reverted it. Now, in my opinion, real quick, I always thought the collection events were the problem. You telling me a $10 battle pass, I can get all the skins, right? But in the collection event, you want $18 per skin? And then like the heirlooms and then the uh, the recolor battle pass skins, they ran up $700 for the Final Fantasy. Like, bro, that was always the craziest thing about Apex to me, personally. But you know, the battle pass, that was also wild. So, you know, y'all fought the good fight. Good job. But with any of that, you always have the option to not buy it, ignore it. Yes, free to play games need to make money, but they don't need my money if i don't want to give them my money i don't have to it's as simple as that like i bought skins in the finals because I, they skins be hard and they be cheaper than like every other game in its category real talk now, i bought skins in apex because that was the game i was enjoying the most at the time but i can't blame them as ridiculous as their prices are i can only blame myself for like you can play the game and not spend a dollar and have the same gameplay experience with every single person that plays the game you know because are they bugging with the collection events yes don't buy it. Are they bugging with the battle pass? Yes. Don't buy it. And if you do ultimately buy a skin, whatever. But just the skins and the the microtransactions, unless the microtransactions are are a literal barrier in the gameplay, just ignore them. It just only cops up if you want, if you like really want to. But it's never gonna be that big of a deal. If I don't have any skins in the finals, they all gone, I'll still have fun playing the game. I didn't have to buy them. And this is the extra one, in my opinion, not as big of a deal, but the community of it. As far as like Twitch and YouTube and all that, there are plenty of games, whole dramas that do fine without having a major presence on any given social media platform. Nice to have if it's there, but if it's not, like it's not the end of the world. If the Twitch numbers are down for a game you like can you find like can you find a game on it like can you can you queue and find a game decently quick you can all right you're good like, i feel like there's so many things that just kind of that cloud people's judgment of the, if they enjoy a game or not when it's doesn't have to be that way like none of them actually get in the way of you enjoying a game except for like a horrible launch like yeah, if the game just broke like hey man <laughs> nothing you can really do about that but when it comes to the steam charts the honeymoon phases of games as far as player accounts, microtransactions, pretty much every time those things won't get in the way of you enjoying a game if you don't let them. Cop a skin if you want to, but you know, it's just know it's not like the most important thing. It's just like, it's a nice to have. And with all that being said, leave in the comments why you don't hate video games. And there was one other topic that I've made it its own separate video for, so I didn't really delve into it in this one about metas in games. That video's on the screen right now. Leave a like, I will see you there. Bye.